September 7th, 2010, at about 4.14 a.m. Moscow time, Al Rosa Mirna Air Enterprises Flight 514 took off from Poly Arna Airport, headed for Moscow's Domodova Airport. On board the Tuplov Tu-154M aircraft were 72 passengers, including three children, and nine crew. The flight would not go as planned, and the two experienced pilots would face one of the most difficult situations that any pilot can face. Flying blind. The extraordinary crash landing of Al Rosa Mirna Air Enterprises Flight 514 deserves to be remembered. Al Rosa Airlines, founded in 2000, flies domestic flights within the Russian Federation with 11 different destinations, including Polyarny Airport, a small regional airport near Udachny, a town of 12,000 in the Republic of Sakha. The flight distance for Flight 514 was 3,921 kilometers, or 2,436 miles, roughly the flight distance between New York City and Los Angeles. The flight time was approximately five hours. The Tupolev Tu-154 is a three-engine, medium-range, narrow-body airliner. Introduced in February 1972, the Tu-154 was considered the workhorse of Russian airlines for decades. The airplane had an astounding 45-year production run between 1968 and 2013, although full production ended in 1997 with only limited production thereafter. In all, more than a thousand were built. Aesthetically similar to a Boeing 727, the Tu-154 is slightly larger, but has the same three-engine configuration. Originally outfitted with Kutenov NK-8 turbofan engines, the Tu-154M instead used Soloviev D-30 turbofan engines, which were more fuel efficient, and along with some aerodynamic refinements that made the M model, which began production in 1984, more fuel efficient, extending range and reducing operating costs. The 48-meter, or 157-foot, 6-inch long plane had a wingspan of 37.55 meters, or 123 feet, 2 inches. Depending upon configuration, the plane could carry between 114 and 180 passengers. At one time, the airplane served in 17 different foreign airlines and was used by several foreign militaries. At its peak in 1990, Tu-154 has carried 137 million passengers 243.8 billion passenger kilometers for Soviet airline Aeroflot and its subsidiaries. As many airports in Russia still used dirt or gravel runways when the plane was designed, the plane was built with oversized landing gear and a six-wheel main bogey. As such, the plane could operate where many other commercial airframes could not. It also had to be able to operate from airfields as short as 2,600 meters or 8,530 feet at its maximum takeoff weight and could operate in polar conditions. While the Tu-154 has suffered 110 serious incidents and 69 hull losses, only a small handful have been attributed to mechanical failures. Many of the losses had to do with the harsh runway conditions in which the plane often operated. The plane typically operated in regions with not very good air traffic control and navigation equipment, and in very difficult weather conditions. The airframe is considered to have a better than expected safety record considering its length of service and its use in those demanding conditions where other airliners are unable to operate. Still, in 2010, the airframe was aging. Chinese airlines had stopped using the Tu-154 in 2001. In January 2010, Aeroflot announced the retirement of its Tu-154 fleet after 40 years, with the last scheduled flight on December 31, 2009. And while a high-profile accident in Poland in April 2010 that killed 96 people, including Polish President Lech Kaczynski, was attributed to pilot error, the Russian Federal Bureau of Aviation had made a recommendation to withdraw the remaining Tu-154s from passenger service in March 2011. This Tu-154M, registration number RA85684, entered service in 1990 and was still well within its 80,000 hour service lifespan. It had no reported significant service issues, although newspapers note that purchase of cheaper, low quality replacement parts was common practice at the time. Al Rosa reported that the plane had recently been serviced and all forms were made according to regulations. There were no comments on this aircraft. The plane flew what was called the Polar Route between Udachny and Moscow. Takeoff had been normal and there was no unusual circumstances until four hours into the flight. At approximately 6.59 a.m. local time, the plane was near Usinsk in the Komi Republic and still more than 1,500 kilometers from Moscow when the commander, Andrei Lamanov, reported electric problems. The plane was flying at 10,600 meters, or flight level 348. The local weather station reported overcast clouds with a base of 400 meters, or just 1,300 feet. Visibility was 22 kilometers, with light winds of 4 knots from west-northwest. 
The cloud cover should not have been a problem. The TU-154M had autopilot and navigational systems that would allow it to reach one of several nearby airports if necessary. The pilots decided to descend as they worked out the problem, preparing for an emergency landing. When the airplane descended through 300 meters, or 9,800 feet, radio contact was lost. The plane's power systems had failed completely. Alexander Nerdako, head of the Federal Air Transport Agency, explained later, The power supply system is like a person's heart. It refuses. Everything else refuses. In addition to losing radio communications, Flight 514 lost its navigational systems, its autopilot, and even though the flaps were powered hydraulically, the handles and switches were electric, and so those were unavailable as well. And if that all doesn't seem bad enough, almost immediately after losing power, the emergency fuel balance alarm went off. The TU-154 has four fuel tanks, two in the wings and two in the fuselage, with a total capacity of 38,750 kilograms of fuel. The fuel is transferred via pumps to a holding tank which supplies the engines. When the power failed, both the pumps and their backups failed, making it impossible to get fuel from the main tanks. The crew had just some 3,300 kilograms of usable fuel in the holding tank, or enough for just 30 minutes of flight time. That was not enough fuel to get to airports at Pechora, Ukta, Borkuta, or Yusinsk, all of which had runways suitable for the TU-154. With no airport in range, pilots Andrei Lamanov and Yevgeny Novozelev were going to have to set the crippled plane down wherever they could, in the middle of Siberia, without navigational gear, ground control assistance, or flaps. After losing radio contact, ground control at Ukta Airport immediately started contacting every airport near the flight's last location. At around 7.47 local time, the city emergency services of Izma were advised that the airplane might approach their disused airfield. By then, Flight 514 was nearly out of fuel. Tiny Izma Airport was operated as a public service airport from 1978 to 1997 and had been closed to fixed-wing aircraft since 2003. The airport was used as a military base, but only for helicopters. The airport had no traffic control facilities, was not marked on maps. Although the runway had been kept generally clear of foliage, its disused runway was only 1,340 meters long. The TU-154 usually requires 2,050 meters of runway for a landing, but that is under normal circumstances. Flight 514 had lost the use of its flaps, meaning that it would have to land at a significantly higher speed than usual. The runway at Isma simply wasn't big enough. Out of time, and with less than 10 minutes of fuel left, Lamanov and Novoselov had no choice. They had to drop below the cloud cover, where they would have precious little time to find a place to land. With their systems down, they could only guess altitude by sight. They didn't even have an artificial horizon. They instead used a glass of water to show them their flight angle. As they didn't have flaps, they had to have the flight attendants move all the passengers forward to shift the weight towards the front of the plane to make braking easier. The plane came out of the low clouds in the Isma region. All the crew could see was marsh and forest where it would be impossible to land. After they turned, Lamanov first saw an island on the river opposite Isma, and only after that he noticed what appeared to be an old lane. It was the Isma runway. The crew members recalled later, At first we thought we were hallucinating. A runway in the forest? Are you kidding? They said it was nearly a miracle that they were even able to make the turn towards the runway. As they neared it, it was clear that the runway was too short. They attempted landing twice, but aborted both times. On the third attempt, they set the plane down. Without flaps, they were landing hot, some 350 to 380 kilometers per hour, or 189 to 205 knots. They only had the reverse engines and the wheel brakes on the extra large landing gear to slow down. The plane was going so fast, the rubber on the wheels caught fire. Some passengers reported that they only knew the plane was in trouble when the wings started chopping off trees. But it wasn't enough. Flight 514 overran the runway and plowed into the Siberian swamp, tearing through trees, ripping holes in the plane. A passenger described the scene as the plane overran the runway into the swampy taiga forest. And now the land, not the airport, only the forest. The plane ground to a stop after some 200 meters. Miraculously, there were no injuries. All 81 passengers and crew were fine. I'd like to thank the crew. We did not even have time to get scared, one of the passengers later said. The flight attendants kept the passengers from panicking and evacuated everyone using the emergency slides. Test pilot Magomed Toboyev praised the pilot's professionalism, behavior in a difficult situation, but added, then of course, there is the will of heaven. There was not available hotel space in tiny Izka, so passengers were temporarily housed in a sports complex as transportation was arranged. 
The Moscow Times reported that some of the passengers engaged in mushroom hunting while they waited. The passengers were transported by helicopter to Ukta, about 160 kilometers or 100 miles south of Izma, except one couple who had, understandably, had enough flying for the day and instead took a train to Moscow from Izma. The crew of the airliner made the last helicopter trip. The Russian Ministry of Transport determined during the investigation that the batteries had overheated, the result of a thermal runaway, where an increase in temperature can cause a further increase in temperature. The affected batteries eventually affected all electrical systems. The cause is usually related to a defect in manufacturing. While one report said that the ministry had taken the batteries away for further testing, no further information was released. On the recommendation of the passengers, pilots Andrei Lamanov and Yevgeny Novoselov were awarded the title Hero of the Russian Federation by Russian President Dmitry Medvedev in 2010 for their courage and heroism in an emergency situation. The other seven crew members were awarded the Order of Courage. Both pilots were experienced first-class pilots who were trained in an era when pilots were trained to operate a plane manually when systems failed. Some experts expressed concern whether newer pilots received the same training or if they would be able to handle an aircraft with the loss of electronics. In an already heroic episode, another unlikely hero emerged. At one point, the Izka airport employed more than 130 people, but by 2010 it only had one employee, Sergei Sotnikov. Sotnikov was only employed part-time during the few months a year that the airport operated as a helipad for the Russian military. But he had, without pay, kept the runway clean and free of debris. He said he did so because he hoped that local aviation would recover and that the airport would eventually open, but over time he did it just for himself. Without Sotnikov's efforts, Flight 514 would have had no place to land. In 2012, partly due to an effort by Russian bloggers, Sotnikov's dedication was rewarded as he was awarded the Medal of the Order for Services to the Fatherland, second degree, by Russian President Vladimir Putin. Although it would have appeared that the airplane had suffered catastrophic damage, in fact the airline was able to repair the aircraft, including replacing a couple of the engines. And about six and a half months after the crash landing, the airplane, stripped down for weight, was able to lift off from the tiny airport at Isma. After a thorough overhaul, the airplane, the Tupolev Tu-154M with the call sign RA-85684, was returned to service with the airline where it served for another seven years, being one of the last Tupolev Tu-154s to operate with a Russian airline. At the end of its service cycle in September of 2018, the airplane, which was affectionately called ISMA, was officially retired to be put on display at the Aviation Museum at Tomachevo Airport in Novosibirsk. Fittingly, Andrei Lomanov piloted ISMA on its final flight to Novosibirsk. I hope you enjoyed this episode of The History Guy, short snippets of forgotten history between 10 and 15 minutes long. And if you did enjoy, please go ahead and click that thumbs up button. If you have any questions or comments or suggestions for future episodes, please write those in the comment section. I will be happy to personally respond. Be sure to follow The History Guy on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and check out our merchandise on teespring.com. And if you'd like more episodes on forgotten history, all you need to do is subscribe. <laughs>